the Blue Jays game with the same saying last night because they're down three nothing. Yeah. So you're telling me there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a okay. chance. Okay. These polls, this swing state polls are. The Washington Post survey dangerous. monkey uh, swing state polls devastating Mike Barnacle and Texas. Deep in the heart of Texas, a, Jump canary, ball. a canary uh, uh, flutters uh, coughing from a coal mine. <laughs> Jump ball in Texas, hard to believe. Wow. It's not just this poll in Texas. There have now been three reputable polls that have shown the same thing about a three or four point spread in Texas. What yeah, has to excite Democrats so much is the fact that Democratic strategists have been saying for years that in time Texas will be competitive. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the electoral map, right. um, and but they were expecting that to happen eight years from now, maybe twelve years from now. It's it, it's happening right now. It's competitive. Today. So take a look at the new Survey Monkey poll of fifteen battlegrounds conducted with the Washington Post. It shows Hillary Clinton with leads of at least four points in states totaling three hundred and four electoral votes, thirty-four more than the two seventy needed to win the presidency. In four-way matchups, Clinton has eleven point leads in New Hampshire and Virginia, eight point leads in Michigan and New Mexico, seven points in Colorado, six points in North Carolina and Pennsylvania and four points in Georgia. While Donald Trump is ahead by five in Iowa, four points in Nevada, three points in Ohio and Arizona, and just two points in Florida and Texas, a more extensive poll of Texas from the University of Houston also shows a tight race there. Trump is ahead of Clinton by three points, 41 percent to Clinton's 38 percent. In Wisconsin, a St. Norbert College poll puts Clinton ahead by eight points, 47 percent to Trump's 39 percent. And at three percent, Green Cardi Cardi candidate Jill Stein pulls ahead of Gary Johnson down at one percent. And in Nevada, Clinton has jumped to a seven-point lead in the Monmouth poll, 47 percent to 40 percent. So, uh, Mike Barnacle, you go through all the, the polls. If you want three numbers to talk about just how dramatic uh, uh, the, the polling has gone state by state, because yesterday Ooh. we were throwing, showing three swing states that showed the race close mm. uh, in at least those three swing states. But look at Texas, look at Georgia, and look at Arizona. And any Republican nominee uh, struggling with those three straights, he's, he's down four points right now mm -hmm. in, in Georgia. But any Republican nominee uh, in late October, going into the last debate, uh, is in big trouble. Well, and there's another state to throw in there, too, in, in terms of the ramifications for the United States Senate, and that's Nevada where uh, Harry Reid's seat is up. Uh, and I think if, if you were talking to anybody in the business six months, a year ago, they felt fairly comfortable that uh, a Republican would grab that seat from Harry Reid. It appears now that that is seriously in question. Look at the and swing just in the last month, too, Joe. It's almost 10 points yeah. since and, September 13th. And, and, and you know what's happened in 10 points? And this underlines, Eddie, the problem Republicans have. He has distanced himself from Republican, from from the Republican nominee, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and now he's bleeding out. It's it is right. a lose lose for a lot of these Republican candidates. Right, we saw this. We knew this was going to happen. Right, Clinton gave them an opening, that you know Donald Trump is unlike any Republican I've ever. He's not. Un he's unlike the Republicans I've dealt with in the past. And so there was an opening that op gave them space down ballot. Now he's like Velcro. Right, and some of them yeah. can't get away from them, and as a result, if they distance themselves, they're done, and if they're connected to them, they're done. Mm -hmm. If they're connected too closely, wow. if they're distanced, they're, they, we certainly see in Nevada that, that in a close race so like Nevada, wrong. distancing uh, themselves has certainly hurt. Right. Uh, but you have Portman, who's doing very well. Uh, the Washington Post said Marco Rubio is in a tighter race. Than expected. Well, <clears throat> one other bit of news: um, it, it, there are p some political reports that have now moved, mm -hmm. actually, Colorado and Virginia mm. uh, into the Clinton camp safely, mm. out of reach. Which now means Donald Trump's wow. path to uh, 270 has to go through Pennsylvania, and that ain't happening. Yeah. So all of this seems to have shaken Donald Trump's confidence in polls. Remember, he always. <laughs> Would like pull them out of his pocket and read them to his audiences. They were once a staple of his campaign rallies. Trump did not read the polls to his audiences in Colorado yesterday because he says they're no longer accurate. 
even though we're doing pretty good in the polls, I don't believe the polls anymore. I don't believe them. I don't believe them. And if there's 10 and if there's one or two bad ones, that's the only one they show. Believe me, folks, we're doing great. Now, they say we're tied in Colorado. I don't think so. I'll be honest. I mean, I, something's going on here. Something. You can't believe anything you see. I don't even believe the polls. I see these polls, and they're not terrible. They're sort of good. Actually, if the people come out and vote, they're very nervous. I have a feeling this is another Brexit. Really? That is the hope of many Trump supporters. Well, that we have another Brexit. If it's two, three, four points, maybe it's another Brexit. If it's seven, eight, nine, ten, which has been the trend across this week, uh, there's not that much of a hidden vote anywhere. Yeah, if you do a little back of the envelope map on this Washington Post story this morning, Hillary Clinton has leads of four points or more, so outside the margin of right. error, in states that add up to 304 electoral votes. Mm -hmm. Trump states in that same way have 138 electoral votes. So even if he won Arizona, Ohio, Florida, these toss-up states we're talking about, he still, based on that map, doesn't get to 270. Yeah. It's hard to see at this point any path for Donald there, Trump. There is no path, Mike, without a, let's say, five-point swing in these swing states that we're looking at yesterday. Uh, and what's that, I guess, that leads to the next story, which is uh, the, the third debate battle, our mm -hmm. equivalent of the Thrilla in Manila in 2016 politics. What does Donald Trump have to do? Can he do anything tonight? other than bring Barack Obama's half-brother to the debate, they pick up five points. Which, by the way, is a good lesson for us all. And I remember in my first campaign school, I said, what's the number one rule? They said, if you have a half-brother who is Kenyan, always be nice to him. Right? You've always preached that. I, yeah. I have always. I said two things. I said that, and I said nobody You're stops silly. you when you're going 90 miles an okay. hour. Okay. You know, now, listen. Mike. Listen, we all have relatives, uh, Mr. Oh, yeah. President. We understand. <laughs> yeah. We understand. We all have relatives, and uh, okay. uh, uh, we're praying for you and uh, the fam extended family. You tonight. know, Joe, I, yeah. I shudder to think of what he might do tonight. But what would you have him do to pick up five points? He, I think it's going to be a tough night. He for him. turns it around uh, with 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 at least four or five points based on the polls yesterday, or it's a landslide. How does he do it? Well, I would have. Wh how would I have him do how it? How would you there's have no, him do there's it? There's no way in the world he could do this. I would have him talk calmly and confidently. Mm -hmm about the bulk of his supporters and how much they've been neglected and forgotten by the establishment in Washington, yeah. the establishment on Wall Street, but calmly and <laughs> confidently. But he cannot do that because he has historically, over the months of his campaign, confused what he sees and hears in the hall in front of him for the country. He's been speaking to a Neko chamber now for over a year, and he, and he gets that adulation from the crowd, mm. and that's all he hears, that's all he feels. He doesn't feel crowds. the He doesn't really feel the country. <laughs> they're, very, they're very big crowds, and for, for Eddie, for the first nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months of his campaign, big crowds right. equaled big poll uh, results, equaled big victories. Uh, but as we said, started saying, Back in the spring, right? You got a shift. You're going to a general election. Those crowds won't win it for you. Uh, but what would you have Donald Trump do tonight if you were flying out to Las Vegas and had his ear, and he would listen to you? <laughs> that would be hilarious. Actually. <laughs> but I would, I would actually insist that he hit hit her on trade. That he hits those, he hits the questions that have, that have really impacted the folks in Midwest uh, America, folks in Ohio. People who are struggling. I'm sorry. No, yeah. you're you're you're, Get emotional. you're you're getting emotional <laughs> getting just really thinking about having yeah. you having up. your special <laughs> moment with Donald time Trump. Time with Trump. People who are struggling. Right, you're struggling right I now. I know, but would um, you like some water? We'll I you. think so, but I think I think what I what I suspect is something you've been tweeting. Beware of the person who has nothing to lose. Right. Oh yeah. I think he's going to double down on the strategy that we saw in the second debate, and instead of thinking about growing. Those folks who are supporting him, he's going to come in really hard, and because we're going to find ourselves. That's what he's got. That's all he's got. Well, if he does that, Mike Barnacle, and let's just be oh, really God. blunt about this: if he does that, and if what we're hearing about Trump TV 
is true, and if that's what they're focusing on right now, then your strategy for winning the presidency, which he may think at this point is beyond reach, is far different than your strategy the day after, which is getting a hardcore 37 to 40 percent, even a 35 to 38 percent group of supporters who are aggrieved and who believe the system is rigged, and then selling subscriptions to them uh, for $9.99 a month to stream Trump TV. And that seems to be the message right now, boiling it down to the core, not not apologizing. You know, basically, it's a no apologies tour. Yeah, but the but the question itself, what would you know if, if you had Donald Trump's ear? You, you know, you can have Donald Trump's ear, but it, his ears are blocked. The other day, through a nod set of circumstances, don't ask me how. Please, I, I hope this story doesn't end I, up with you and Donald Trump. No, like I spent know, about three in, hours. In I spent about three hours with someone who is playing a very significant role in Donald Trump's campaign. Right. And I asked this person. I said, does Trump realize the damage that he is doing to himself and to the process by continually harping on a rigged election mm. and in certain places, you know, the, the election is going to be rigged? And the response was, no, he does not realize it because he is so filled with anger about the potential, about the prospect of losing, that he can't see beyond that. He's so filled with rage that that's what's fueling his campaign really? in these last I, days. I, I must say, I, I, I haven't picked that up. I picked up a more calculated, uh, more calculated Trump. Uh, calculated for beyond the election. For, for, for beyond for, the for election. Trump TV. Yeah. And, and, yeah, Trump uh, TV. A more calculated Trump and, uh, <clears throat> uh, that, that understands that you, you have your hardcore group of 37%, 36, what is that, 40 million people yeah. out there? Doesn't matter. Roger Ailes, since 1996, even before all of these stories came out over the past six months, was never accepted by polite society in New York City. People always, always besmirched his character, even before all of these, these allegations came out against him. Um, Donald Trump, Willie, doesn't need to be accepted by polite society to make hundreds of millions of dollars on Trump TV. Think about how depressing that is, though, for Republicans who don't want Hillary Clinton to be president, right. that they have a candidate who's thinking about his TV <laughs> network and not becoming president no. and installing Supreme Court justices. He put out over the last couple of days a couple of things that a real presidential campaign would have put out. Ethics reform two days ago. Mm -hmm. Yesterday he talked about congressional term limits. But if you watched his speeches in Colorado, it, right. the speeches weren't about that. Right. The speeches were about the conspiracies now. Um, he said in that clip we just played, quote, you can't believe anything you see. He's got the conspiratorial mind now where he wants everybody to know that this thing is rigged, it's fixed. If Hillary Clinton wins, it won't be fair, and we will have to go do something about it. We will have to take our country back some other way. If you're Donald Trump, Mika, mm -hmm. you, and you've always said this, he knows how to go in, he knows how to read a crowd. Yeah. People that are going to Trump rallies do not want his four-point plan right. for uh, judicial reform. Right. They want to hear about how the media is lying to them, about how Washington is rigged, and how everything that's happened over the past 30 years has happened because of bad leadership from people like the Bushes and the Clintons. Yeah, and weirdly they trust that however he does how he does, he does things well. And that and, he's going to figure out how to cut Washington, through that. Yeah, well, exactly. he's an outsider. Yeah. And he proves that every day. Yeah. He's an outsider. So, they want to hear an outsider rail against the system. But tonight I think he could run into some problems. It's the third and final presidential debate 